So we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Evening, everybody. Hello. So people will certainly start to come in. It takes a little while. Hi, hey, Christian. Hi, Marco. Let Good evening, Jean Claude. So, because of this time change now, we don't know. Eh? Some, yeah. uh, <laughs> everybody's complaining about it. It's a nightmare. <laughs> I didn't but, uh, understand why they are not changing it in Europe. I really didn't understand it. Well, actually, they said next year it will be uh, it will be uh, unchanged anymore. But I don't know which time. <laughs> I hope summertime I, for us. It's I think nice, they uh, said that already a few years back. I don't believe. But you know, it's not the worst part. This morning I had a, a Zoom call with Australia and uh, my <laughs> colleague there, she said, you know, in Australia, we have three different time zones. <laughs> in Australia <laughs> itself. <laughs> One country. Oh, well, a little bit a bigger country. Yeah, but look, yeah, it's uh, not like China, Austria, as we China say, had Marta, one right? time zone. <laughs> in, in China, there is no difference. You know, by the way you are, is one time zone. Ah, that's clever. Yeah. Which yeah. is also tricky because sometimes really dark at four. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, but at least tonight we are all in the same time zone. Malta, yes. Austria, yeah, and Switzerland. That's true. That's true. Yes, absolutely. So um, tonight I made a little bit uh, of a change uh, because I'm actually using StreamYard and uh, broadcasting in, uh, in the group, but I felt it would be a nice thing to, uh, to broadcast in different places. So I'm broadcasting it also on my uh, personal page and also on my YouTube. So uh, because I had some right. comments from people saying, oh, we are not on Facebook. Can we have it somewhere else? And I said, you will have it on, uh, on YouTube too. So uh, uh, it gives a little bit more uh, presence. And I think the, 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 the topic today is also a nice one. And um, that's why we are okay. happy to have uh, Christian here. Now, some people may not realize, but if you are in StreamYard and you, you go into StreamYard, uh, we see your name. If you are not on StreamYard, we don't see your name. But uh, it's not a big deal. It's, uh, it's like that you have to make some... Uh, uh, sometimes some uh, choices, I would say. So, Christian, uh, tell us about you. <laughs> what you want to know? No, everything. Um, everything, everything. No, it's a, a, a funny story. My life is a really funny story um, because I'm born in Austria and uh, yeah. Nobody in my family was diving, snorkeling, or something else. And uh, when I was six years old, my uncle, he was the only diver in my family, who gave me a Christmas present, a fins, mask, and snorkel. And uh, a few months later, we went to a very nice lake near Vienna, and I was snorkeling on the surface, and he was scuba diving. And at five meters, he showed me... Um, small boat which was a nice attraction for the divers and um, I free dive down with, uh, with six years to this uh, boat and uh, I was so fascinated being underwater holding my press and uh, I think this moment changed my life uh, forever um, because when I come back to the surface I discovered a completely new world um, you know, I can have adventures which I don't have in Vienna, right? So you have no adventure in Vienna. Um, and um, so I was really fascinated by, by the underwater world. And I start watching uh, documentaries about uh, Hans Haas. Yeah. He was from Austria. And he was every Sunday um, on TV. So I always found a reason why I have not... To go to church because I want to watch Hans Haas diving in the Red Sea. Um, with 10, I started scuba diving in the swimming pool of my parents. Um, the swimming pool was just three meters in, in um, diaphragm and one meter stepped, and I was scuba diving there the whole summertime. 
you know, I think as a kid, you have much more fantasies <laughs> than nowadays <laughs> because now I cannot dive there for three minutes and get bored. Uh, but as a kid, I, I loved uh, uh, scuba diving. But then with 16, um, I saw the movie The Big Blue. And um, when I saw the movie the first time, I realized, okay, this should be my life. I want to be Enzo Mallorca. I want to break world <laughs> records. I want to have all the women and the money like him. And uh, this was the reason why I started um, free diving. But this was uh, more than 20 years ago. So at that time, I believe I was the first guy who was trying free diving uh, on a more professional base with, with 17, 18, 19 years old. And um, it was funny because at that time I, I went to the dive shops in Vienna and was asking for the long fins. And they always say, what do you want? Long fins? Why? You have here the scuba fins and have fun. No, no, no. I want the long ones. So I have to drive to Italy to buy my first free diving fins uh, in the spear fishing shops in, in Trieste. So it was, uh, nowadays everybody knows free diving. You can buy it everywhere. But at that time, there was nothing, completely nothing. And um, this was the cool thing because when I started free diving, um, you was already uh, on a very high level because there was no one else. So uh, I was already with 4 minute 50, with Austrian records in the newspapers. And I discovered um, that free diving um, was changing my whole life. And I think that's, that's the, the important uh, topic of, of tonight's talk. Um, and um, in 2000, no, it was 90. 99, I, I did my first freediving instructor course with Umberto Pellizzari in Italy because uh, one year ago, uh, before that time, uh, I lost three friends of mine during freediving. So um, for me and my parents, it was a nightmare, you know, you lost three friends in, in six months because there was always alone freediving and one was dying in the ocean, another one was dying in the swimming pool doing um, static. And this was for me the reason to start uh, to be a freediving instructor because my first motivation was just that nobody has to die anymore because of freediving. So this was my first motivation. And um, I was competing in world championship and Austrian and uh, German competitions. But then I realized two things. The first one was I'm not a competitor. So if you have the second place, you are the first loser, which is uh, nothing for me. So I always try to be the winner. Um, and the second thing was I, I discovered that if you want to have sponsors, and my biggest dream was uh, to become a professional freediver in Austria. And freediving is not an official sport, so I get no money from the state. So I have to have uh, sponsors uh, to make money. And I discovered that uh, world records are much better for this uh, than competitions. Because in competitions, you every competition, this is impossible. But when you make a world record, it's your decision if you win or lose. There is no other one. Um, and this was the reason why I started in 2003 with my world records. And since 14 years now, um, yeah, I'm a professional freediver in Austria. <laughs> All right. So, so that brought you the world records, brought you the sponsors. Yes, exactly. So I had always my my ideas in my mind, which is very important because um, I always see the things uh, coming. I I don't know why, but I see always the trends which will come in the next years. And I saw it with free diving. I saw it now with uh, coronavirus that something will change and you have to change. So I always see something on a very early stage and I have the attitude to, to change everything. And that's the reason why I'm uh, still a professional free diver after 14 years, because I know, because I see it as a company. And, and not only like uh, yeah, having some fun in the water. So for me, professional freediver means uh, you run your own business. And I think that's the big difference 
to most of the other free divers, which are much better than 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 I am. But um, this is just like okay, I want to be a good competitor. I want to break records, and that's it. They don't want to make money out of it. And my idea was, I want to travel all over the world. I want to make money with it and living my dream. So that's the big difference, I think, to many to the other free divers. I think this is a big difference because many people they they have a completely different uh, idea, and, uh, and at the end of the day, they are just running after sponsors, and uh, it's uh, becoming more. It was always becoming more and more difficult to have sponsors. Yeah, and the point is, you know, you have uh, three types of athletes. The first one is the the pure athlete, uh, which is a great athlete who can make a lot of world records, but they will never find sponsors because they are only focused on the on the sport. Then you have the second guys. Um, that's like I am. I'm not the best free diver in the world, but I know how marketing is working. I know how to run a business. So I can make uh, a lot of money out of it. And then you have the third types, which have both. But these are the David Beckhams of this planet. So um, then you are a really great guy and, and, and uh, very professional. Um, but for if you are just like a competitive freediver, it's, I think it's very hard to make money out of it. Because I, I spent much more time um, to find sponsors or to make them satisfied or try to sell my speeches, which, which is a very big part, not because of the money, because I also love to talk about uh, my experience and my mental strength. Um, but this, this is really hard work. So I have my own office in my house. So I sit there and other people go to the bank or insurance companies or whatever. I sit in my office and make my work. Yeah, but you treat it as a business, and that's good. It's uh, there's a lot of similarities in what you say in the diving industry as well. So uh, I can relate to that a lot. Yeah, it's a great parallel. It's, it's not only the, I would say the similarity in the scuba diving industry. It's it's exactly the same uh, similarity in the marketing business now. Definitely, definitely. Nine to five. Uh, uh, job or the hamster wheel or uh, you know this this rat race that's the moment you you have to have some passion and no matter where but if you turn your passion into your business and you are having the the power to do that uh, you can change a lot for your life but uh, uh, it will it will be hard work too Definitely, but if you do what you love, it's not like a job. So if you ask me if I have a job, I, I would say no, because I do every day what I love to do. I love to talk to you now. That's the reason why I do it. And that's, for me, the most important thing in my life, because since 14 years, I live every day by my own and how I like to do it. So if I want to make an interview with a magazine, I do it. If not, I don't do it. If I like to make a speech with the company, I do it. If I don't, I don't. And that's, you know, this freedom is um, the best thing you can have in your life because you do what you do and you do what you love. And and that's, that's uh, you know, you cannot make so much money with another work uh, which you hate and, and you are frustrated every morning to go to work just because of money. So... Yeah. But it opened uh, quite some uh, different doors too. I, I don't know, but I can remember uh, we did a few things together. We did yeah. uh, some uh, <laughs> courses where we had people and uh, you would uh, bring everyone to uh, basically hold his breath or for double of the time and you would guarantee that and it was definitely working. But this had an application. We'll talk about that, but this had an application if in your on your normal life. The second thing, uh, I remember we did something similar with, uh, with a sports team. Uh, I, uh, it was a hockey team and yes. uh, the trainer said I had difficulty, he had difficulty to, uh, to basically make the mental preparation of his uh, players and we did that and after that they, uh, they did fantastic in the championship. Uh, then the other thing that I have seen you doing was uh, some uh, uh, yeah, you you acted as a guest speaker, but then I also see you modeling somehow in in, 
like Miami Vice or something like that. So, <laughs> so you did a lot of uh, different things. So, so it's very interesting. The point is, you know, I everything I do, I do because of my passion. I, I love what I do. Uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, uh, you know, you need to think outside the box. You know, if you just do free diving courses, I can make money in summer, but not in winter time. In Austria, the lakes are frozen. Nobody makes a free diving course. <laughs> so you have to think outside the box and to have many opportunities where you can make money. Only sponsors would never work in. Only courses would never work in. Only the modeling would never work in. But all things together, I write books, I make my speeches. Um, all things together um, make it possible to have a nice life uh, from the money side. Um, I'm not rich, uh, but um, I think I have enough money to have a lot of fun. And, and that's for me the most important thing, you know, uh, to have always fun and making crazy things with my uh, crazy dives in the, in the mountains, in Himalaya or wherever, because I love to do this. But I, I, the money is not the first thing uh, I think about it. Uh, but when you put all things together, it's okay for my living. And, and that's the important thing, you know, if, because if something breaks down, like now with the COVID, uh, I had no speeches in, in from March to June. I lost 15,000 euros in three hours. Because when we had the lockdown, I get the emails coming in, no speech, no speech, no speech, we cancel, we cancel. And 15,000 euros was, was gone in three hours. Um, but on the other side, I had other ideas, other projects, which bring the money uh, uh, on my bank account. So everything is fine. But you need to have some other incomes too, because as a just as a professional freediver with courses, it would be never working in Austria. You can do this maybe on the Maldives or wherever, but never in Austria. But they would have the same problem because uh, the tourism was uh, shut down. Actually, well, now and, yes, and, yes. And, and then nothing happened. Actually, during the summer, you had more business probably than in the Maldives, if we compare. But uh, I, th I think the key element is that uh, what you are telling now is you are in a situation, you lose in three hours, you lose uh, 15,000 euros or so all the business that you were supposed to have for uh, for the next uh, few weeks. And then uh, what do you do then? You can put your head in the sand and say the world is uh, shit. <laughs> or what do you do? And I think this is where you have this mental uh, strength that many people don't have. So what did you, how did you so react? First of all, first of all I, I put my head in the sand for three days. <laughs> Okay. Because at the, at the, you know, uh, nobody's perfect. And um, if someone is telling you um, this has no effect on you, um, it's he's lying. Because, uh, of course, 15,000 euros in three hours has a huge impact. Um, but the question is how long you stay depressed, how long you have your head in the sand. And um, this is what I was really lucky to have a sport which is the most mental sport in the world. Because free diving is just in the head. I mean, Jean-Claude, you know from your own courses with me, um, doubling the time, it's an uh, improvement of 100% uh, in one hour is, is uh, possible with 95% uh, of all my students. And I had in the last 20 years, 9,000 students. Um, and then I realized why this is possible, what are the, the key factors of, of mental power. Because I was really lucky in uh, 2002, in the summertime, I, I had an um, operation of my legs. And um, after three months hospital, I went to the lake uh, for scuba diving. And every time when I make a fin kick, uh, I was flooding my, my mask from inside because of my tears of pain. And I decided I need something to go over this pain. And I bought the Guinness Book of Records. And this was the reason why I decided to make my first world record in February 2003 with uh, dynamic diving under ice. 
and I was never diving before on the ice. So it was the first time for me to dive 90 meters from one side to the other side under the ice. And I discovered so many things during my world records, during my courses, how the brain is working because 60 seconds are always 60 seconds. If you think positive, or if you think negative, it's a huge impact. I mean, if I tell you this now, you can say, okay, yeah, it's maybe possible or not. But I saw it on my watch because when I think positive, I'm much more relaxed. So I can stay much more time underwater than when I think negative. Because when I think negative, my heartbeat is higher. So the time is less. So I discovered everything, how my brain is working during my press holds. And I was always trying to find out how my brain is working because my brain is working different to your brains. But I discovered how my brain is working and I had the possibility to make the transformation from the free diving to the normal life. So I'm a very positive thinking guy. And um, this was why after three days I say, okay, calm down, relax, think, make your business, try something new. And it was working perfectly because I make now this year much more money than the years before, <laughs> which is very funny. Yeah. But you know, you, the, the point is you have to know how your brain is working because as I said, every brain works different. Um, and uh, when you do free diving, you discover how your brain is working for you. Because I can't tell you, you have to do this, you have to do that, and that's the secret of, of success. Um, uh, there are some rules, of course, which are very helpful. I always love um, to hear the speech of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the six rules of success. Um, this is something general. But the point is, you have to figure out how your own brain is working. Yeah. Because my brain, for example, is working. I cannot dive 100 meter. I dive four times 25 meters. Four times 25 meters at the end is also 100 meter. But for me, four times 25 is not so far like 100 meter. Uh, for another guy, he has to dive uh, more than 100 meter in training to make the world record with 100 meter. I have to stop at 90 or maybe 92 meters in training, and I never have done any world records before in the training. I always stopped a few meters before because then for me it's much better because when I know I did 105 meters in training. I'm not really focused. I'm not concentrated because I think, okay, I did it already. It's uh, easy, cheesy. I just dive and then I make some mistakes. When I know I do this now for the first time ever as a world record, I'm much more focused um, and yeah. much more concentrated. So that's the point. You have to know how your brain is working and free diving is the perfect tool to find it out. That's and then you have to be then you have to be able to transition that to your everyday life and then you can profit from it. Definitely, definitely. So I was uh, writing also a few books about this topic. Uh, one book, it's po both books I'm German, by the way, that's the problem. But uh, one book is about my mental um, power, which is working for me. And another book is, uh, it's a uh, funny thing, uh, it's... Um, coming out end of February this year. And it's about uh, decisions. Because the funny thing is I want to make a second book about mental power uh, because my first one is a little bit old now. Uh, it's a few years old and I want to make it new with a friend of mine. And uh, we already started to work on this book. The book was 50% uh, finished. And then I told him because he's the writer, I told him, okay, we take all these 200 pages and put it to the basket and we make it completely new. Because the point is what I figured out is that everything starts with a decision. So whatever we do in our life, the first thing is always to make a decision. And this was why we decided to make uh, just a book about decisions. So, um, okay. And that, that's the funny thing, you know, I, this is how I work. So uh, 
I try something out, I work, I work, and then I see the direction is not the right way. I change immediately. Um, and I think um, this flexibility and thinking outside of the box is helping me in the last years. Because when I started freediving, I was always the first one. Because in Austria, Germany, there was no one else doing it. So I was one of the first instructors. Um, then I saw that freediving will have a boom um, a few years ago, but I saw it already 10 years ago. The, the point is, most of the time, I'm a little bit too early with all my ideas because everybody was laughing about me. I remember I was talking uh, six months to show code, please make a course, make a course. No, no, no. And then he made it and then we was the best friends because we was on the phone every day. So I was always a little bit too early. Uh, but now, if you have a crisis, um, it's very good to be always a little bit earlier than the other ones because then you can react in the right time. Yeah, so uh, this is very something uh, which, which is uh, very important. And what I also learned is uh, you need a lot of um, endurance. So um, because, you know, you cannot start a business and after six months uh, you are successful. This is not working. So the, the first three years um, of my own business was, was not very easy. Um, but after three years it was running and everything was perfect. But after three years I ran out of money. I had nothing to eat. Uh, it was really, uh, there was nothing. And I was uh, very close to, to stop and going back to the bank. I was a, a treasurer and investment banker before. And, um, but uh, I decided to give me another chance, another chance, another chance. And then after three years, I realized now everything is much more easier and it was running, 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 and it's getting bigger, bigger every year. Um, so you need also the, the motivation go over such hard times too. And yeah. um, I always uh, tell in my speeches uh, to the audience, uh, if you want to have the perfect life, because I am so lucky to have the perfect life, because I just do what I love, um, you have to ask always two questions to yourself. The first question is why? Why you want it? whatever it is. And the second question is, and this is much more important, how hard you want it. Oh. Because if the why and the how much you want it is big enough, you will be successful. And if it takes one year, two years, 10 years, it makes no difference. I was 16 years when I made the decision to want to be the professor and freediver, and it took me 14 years to realize this dream. Yeah. But, but everything in these 14 years, everything I did was to have this big goal uh, and the big dream to become a professional freediver. And this is because I want it so hard. And some people give up after two weeks. Yes. <laughs> True. Huh? And, 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 and if you give up after two, two weeks, the only thing I can tell you, go to the lottery and uh, or casino and hopefully you have luck, but you can't be successful in that short time. It, it's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, I agree. You so know, you have to have a lot of stamina as well, like to keep on going. Yeah, it, because, you know, if you know what you really want, so from inside your heart, on the bottom of the heart, you will never stop it. You know, every idea I had uh, in, in 2003, when I did the first record under ice, and I, I found out that ice diving is exactly what I really love because, you know, you don't need to be a super performance freediver um, and much better freediver than I am uh, was not able to dive under ice because of the mental uh, situation you have because normally you do the world records in the swimming pool and you can go up each meter and you go back to the start and you try it again under the ice you hit the ice and you have a problem but this situation is 
what I really like to have these uh, conditions that you know you have it's now one single press where you have to make the decision to start your dive and you need to be 100% sure mentally and, and, and physically to reach the other side. If you're not 100% sure, you should not start the dive because you have a big problem. And then I decided to go in caves. Nobody was done it before. Everybody said to me, it's impossible. If someone tells me it's impossible, <laughs> this is the biggest motivation in my life. Because when it's not done before, uh, at the first, I think always uh, there must be a reason why. And then I found out why. I was the first guy uh, over 5,000 meters uh, attitude uh, free diving in, in Nepal, uh, in a lake. And I was asking 10 doctors to support me and all 10 doctors told me it's impossible you will die. I asked an 11 doctor and he said, yeah, it, it's a nice project, but it's impossible. And I said to him, okay, it's a nice project. Let's talk about this part of the sentence and uh, forget the rest. Tell me why you think it's not possible. And that's also a funny thing. Um, I always um, think not in problems. I always think in solutions. Yeah. That's a very big difference. If you think in problems, you have a limit. You, you cannot be successful. If I have a problem, I think in the second, what is the solution to solve the problem? Yeah, it's also more interesting to think like this. Otherwise, it, 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 it's the only right way to think. Because yeah. if you think in problems, you always find problems. Always. Yeah, yeah. When, it, when I was uh, 30 and I went to my parents and told them, now I stopped working in the bank, everybody told me please don't do it you make so much money and you have a great life and uh, and i said no i have a lot of money right but i have not the, the big dream life which i had as a kid and uh, there was no one telling me stop working in the bank and and start your own business and yes. now many people would say okay my parents are right maybe it's better to have a good job with a income every month um, but but that's the big problem you know because everybody's thinking okay I, I have no regular income i have not this i have no you know then they think in problems yeah and i always think in solutions and uh, when i went to this doctor i say okay there is no problems there are just solutions so tell me the solutions to make this life uh, uh, possible and after six months, I was in April doing this. Uh, um, for me, it was one of the, the best free diving records in my life. But if I would listen to the 10 doctors, you would be dead. I, I would never have done this, you know. Um, so, yeah, but I think this is something which you can learn. So I don't think that, uh, um, you know, I believe that we all came to this planet with the same experience, exactly zero experience. <laughs> and then it's the question what you make out of this uh, experience, what you have, positive or negative. So not all my world records was working. And for me, the, the records where I had the blackouts or competitions, for me, this was the most important times in my life. Because if you fail, you can say, okay, I'm not good enough, I, I stop freediving. Or you think about why you failed and then you make some rules uh, where you think that uh, it will not happen anymore. And that's the big difference. So um, for me, um, a failure is, is the biggest learning in my life. Yeah. It's what you make out of it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And the most important thing, you know, you need always to be um, correct to yourself. I think the biggest problem of, of, of many people out there is that they stay in front of the mirror and say, everything is okay. Because being outside of the comfort zone, it's much harder for, for most of the people than being on the sofa, on the couch and having a a good life, a nice life. Um, but learning something about yourself is 
always out of the comfort zone always it yeah. cannot be you cannot something learning in your comfort zone this is impossible yeah i agree so yes. if you are always out of the comfort zone you learn you learn you learn and then you get better and better but it's difficult to bring people out of their comfort zone i would say especially in europe eh? they, they have difficulty to to overcome that you know stage. why because think back to the school the teacher have they tell you you have to do this you have to do that my parents told me you have to do that you have to do that and that's the problem um and and this is very hard to get out of the system you need to be a big dreamer in your life to go out of this system which we have uh, since we are kids you know i remember when i, when I was 16 i want to stop school i want to start already my professional freediving career again in austria uh, and my parents said, no, please make this cool and maybe you go skiing and football and all these typically Austrian sports. Um, and I said, no, I stopped school now. And it was a nightmare, I think, for my parents. Um, luckily for them, I saw two weeks later another movie, which was Wall Street. And this was the reason why I finished <laughs> school and was working as an investment banker. So these two movies <laughs> at that time was... Uh, yeah, was was uh, part of my life <laughs> in the rest of my life. Um, but I think, uh, you know, if you have a big, big dream, um, nothing can stop you. And then if you go outside the box, and this means not you have to break world records and freediving, you know, um, going uh, out uh, of uh, your comfort zone can be go running every day or whatever it is, you know, it must not be something big like a world record. Um, and it can be done in very small steps, but you have to start. If you really want to, to have a great life, you need to go out of your comfort zone because then you realize how everything is working, how you are working, uh, because then you stand in front of the mirror and say, okay, it's not my perfect life, which I have now. And I believe that I only have this only life which I have now, <laughs> and that's the reason why I want to make the best out of it. So this is always my motivation because uh, I think uh, I have, I don't know, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years of lifetime, and I want to make uh, the best out of it. And this is yeah, my, my, my motivation. I can relate to that a lot in terms of I also live probably a life that is not so typical European because I was raised in Switzerland and all my friends now have secure jobs in whatever field they are in the pharmaceutical industry in the in the building industry in the banking industry and I could have done exactly the same but I uh, I also thought that it's more maybe that sounds a little bit to some people a little bit stupid but I want to live my life while I'm living. Yes. Uh, I, I have 60, 70, 80 years as you have. I don't want to maybe live the last 15 well. I want to live <laughs> my life well. Exactly, and exactly. And I mean, look, the people do, do uh, I think the three of us, we exactly are this, uh, this type of model. We, we belong to the 15%, 10, 15% of the people who took a decision to say, I don't want to be in this uh, system. I want to do something different. Of course, you have to do, you know, marketing, uh, uh, having money, whatever. You have some obligations. But at the end of the day, you do something that you like to do. And, and that, that's still the exception because your friends, Marco, who are still in the pharmaceutical industry or whatever, or Christian in the bank, they they what is their thinking i mean i remember when i say i'm leaving to the maldives they, they everybody says oh you are lucky i say you can do the same well but i cannot leave the family i cannot leave my job i cannot leave my comfort i say well i i was and then i came back i was in the maldives i said well uh, i lost weight because i was eating rice fish fish and rice and banana and ananas but i had a fantastic uh, time and i'm going back and they say you are crazy 
I say, but that's the point. If you if you want to do something, you can force to do it, and people they will still stay in this comfort zone. I mean, they will you say you why? are you are you and why? we envy you, but they don't do it. You know why? Because of fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have fear, and uh, during my speeches, I always say fear is just in your fantasy, and it's in the future. Yeah. The only thing is is a uh, danger because the danger is right now at that moment and i believe that so many people live in the past it was not working and now it's still not working or i make this wrong decision i didn't want to make the wrong decision again so living not in the moment and having fear to make some wrong decisions you have already a limit yeah. you are limited and that's always what i believe what is very important if you have a limit this is always when when uh, journalists ask me if i have fear during my dives i never have fear underwater i have respect which is important because if you have respect you are preparing well you are training you have your safety divers you have your doctor everything is fine if it goes wrong okay no big deal but uh, this is the risk management. But if you have fear, you are already limited. Yeah. And this is because the people live in the past. Because 10 years ago, I made this wrong decision and it was so hard time after. I didn't want to have it back. Hey, come on. It was 10 years ago. You changed a lot. Your, your mentality changed. The situation changed. The world changed. Everything is completely new. Don't be afraid of making decisions. Yeah, and exactly. I think that, that that's the big, big point that many people have so much fear. And that was, I tell you, if you have fear, you are not leaving your comfort zone. Yes, exactly. And that's the reason why they say, okay, in front of the mirror, okay, the job in the bank is nice, the money is okay, so I have a good life. It's okay. I don't want to go to the Maldives like Shotgun and having the perfect life. So yeah. for them, it's much easier to stay in the comfort zone instead of leaving the comfort zone and trying to find out what happened beyond the comfort zone. And yeah. that's, the, that's the interesting part. This is where the adventure starts. This is where the big experience starts. And I think that's the big difference why we are we we are and not living the normal life like the other ones. Um, because I like the adventure, I like new experiences, and I always try something new out, and yeah, it makes much more fun. I think as well, but I don't know, do you think that all the kids have these dreams, or like you were in this lake and seen this boat at five meters and you had this moment, I had stuff like this as well, but... Uh... I, I don't know, maybe some people don't have the dream and the wish to live this adventurous life. I, I think everybody has it. Everybody has it. But not everybody find out what it is. Yeah. Because that is what I was meaning before. If you stand in front of the mirror. Uh, sorry, guys. Too much talking with my hands. Um you have to find out what is your passion, if it's painting or if it's uh, writing a book or whatever, you know, everybody has something inside. Um, you have to find it. I was lucky to find it very young, of course. Maybe it was luck. Um, I don't know how you call it. Um, I really don't know. Um, but I think um, everybody has it. You just have to find it. And uh, normally you find it very easy because I found it out uh, when I talk about a topic which I really love. It's, let's say, ocean protection now. Um, everybody says, oh, my God, you have fire inside. You can see it in your eyes when you talk about it. Then you know it already. If you talk something like, yeah, sitting in the bank was nice, uh, there is no fire. Yeah, but yeah. if you talk about a topic and where you have your all the emotions and everything inside and you put all your energy 
in this topic, then you're already on the right way. So I think everybody has it, but not everybody is listening to it. Yeah, because many that's... people still think that if you have money uh, and a regular income, um, that's our life. I make less money than in the bank, of course, but I have a much nicer life than before. Because yeah, yeah. Man, money is not everything. I mean, you need an. Everybody needs a little bit of money for paying the bills, eat, sleep, whatever. Um, but uh, it's a, a nice question which I always ask my friends: Is when you are rich? Yeah. Is it ten thousand euros a month, one hundred thousand a month, one million a month, or a year? What makes you rich? Well. I know what makes me rich, you know. My best time in my life was after three years of making my decision to become a professional freediver with no money. I even had no money to buy my food on the next day. But when I think all over my 44 years now, this was the best time in my life because I had no money to lose. I had no money to spend for something. So I was just living in the moment I was not thinking, what can I buy tomorrow <laughs> or what I have to make with all this money, which I made now in my speeches. I buy new things or whatever stuff, you know. I hate no money. I don't have any problems. I don't have to think, what could I buy or something like this, you know. So at that time, I was in the middle of my, my, my whole life. Uh, my body, my mentally, everything was in the middle. And I had no money. Yeah. And I think this was a, a very important experience for me to know I don't need uh, 10,000 euros a month to be happy. I'm happy if I can go doing the stuff which I love. I was uh, last weekend in a lake where nobody is allowed to dive. And I was the first person inside. And it was fantastic. I was there for one hour in six degrees having so much fun uh, in Austria in a lake in the mountains with, with uh, trees and everything. It was just beautiful. And this is much more for me than 10,000 euros of my bank account. Yeah, to have the possibility to travel all over the world to doing stuff which I really love, uh, doing dives which was never done before. This gives me much more than all the money on this planet. And this is also what you have uh, to think about uh, what makes you happy. Yeah. What makes you happy? Yeah. That's, that's the, the question which everybody should ask uh, himself. And uh, of course, you will find an answer. I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody has something inside him because I believe that this is the reason why we are on this planet. We are not on this planet to make a boring job, to make money, uh, to make uh, a credit, to buy a house and to have one holiday every year. Uh, I think that's not the reason why we are on this planet. And the, the funny thing is, uh, it was two years ago, I saw another movie. I'm <laughs> always connected to movies. Uh, it was about David Beckham uh, playing football on all seven continents and uh, um, playing with kids uh, in in in, um, in Oceania, he was playing with the monks in Nepal, talking about the earthquake. Uh, he was playing with refugees in in Djibouti, and he was playing on all seven continents. And at the end of um, this ten days trip uh, worldwide, he was organizing a charity football match in Manchester. And all the money he made, he was giving back to these organizations which he was visiting on all seven continents. And at that moment, I had the vision um, to make the, the oceans uh, cleaner and to, 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 to help the oceans because I know the oceans now since uh, yeah, 30 years. I so saw all the problems, uh, shark finning, plastic pollution and all the stuff. And when I realized that my biggest wish in my life is to create healthy oceans, this was the best moment in my life because now I know why I am here. 
And I know now why every world record, every mistake I did, everything I did brought me to this point to make the decision to help the oceans. And when I realized this, for me, this was uh, the biggest milestone in my life because everything I do now is um, I will everything try and doing to, to uh, protect the oceans. And when I make my speeches at the moment, always talking about the ocean problems and stuff like this, also in my interviews, and the, the, the people realize how important this topic is for me. And now I know my big vision of my life. And this is the greatest gift I have now. Because the rest of my life, I will all, only work for this uh, big vision. Um, I have now my own foundation and everything. I'm already in contact with Mr. Schwarzenegger about this. And, you know, it's, it's think big. And <laughs> I know it's, 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 it's very hard uh, because the oceans are very, very big. But if you find your reason why you are on this planet, I think that's the, the best moment in your life. And everything changed after this moment. Everything changed completely. It's just a whole new level now. But I think yeah, you have to, to, to find it. You have to be looking for it. And, exactly. if you, and if you just close yourself in security and a, and a standard job, like we said, in a bank or whatever, and you think that's all you want in life, you will not look for that. Exactly. And, and if you see it, you need to be open to take it. I think uh, it's nice to, to say uh, we have Philip, uh, Philip Pulver. Some of you may know him. He's a good friend of mine. He says a um, very good point about the comfort zone. Then he said uh, um, but you have to know we belong to a few as others like stability, no risk ever. And uh, then he said also we can give a person knowledge but we cannot make them think. Some people want to stay foolish only because the truth requires change. It's, it's a very strong and, and powerful uh, sentence then. And then thank you for the motivation, Christian. He says, hopefully many will follow your great advice. <laughs> I hope it too. I hope it too. Um, you know, I think um, there is one interesting um, yeah, topic. I, I have no kids. And to be honest, um, I decided to have no kids because I think if you have kids, that's the only reason why you cannot live the dream life you want because you have responsibility for your kids. True. I always yeah. talk to my parents and they say, no, please don't do it. And I say, no. It's not your life, it's my life. And I live the life I want, not which you want. Uh, I always talk to my girlfriends and to everyone, and this was the reason why I had a lot of them, because um, most of them didn't understand. <laughs> uh, because everybody at the moment says, okay, in the first thing, when, when they talk to me, they think, yeah, you are a very egoistic uh, guy. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. But when I am happy, my surrounding is also happy. If I feel unhappy, my family will feel unhappy. And this is what you always should have in your mind. And now I have my wife and she's, she's supporting me and everything is great. But she discovered if she would say something against me, I would not be longer with her. Because for me, the most important part in my life is my life. And if you are not happy with it, you are not part of my life. It sounds hard at the beginning, but when you try it out, you realize um, it's a, a, a great way to do it because all the people around you will support you. They will not be against you because all my friends changed completely um, because the friends that say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do this. No, you are not the right people around me. Um, and I changed my whole uh, friend uh, about me and now they are supporting me they're doing everything that i can live my my perfect life and uh, that's also something which is important for the guys out there 
if you have kids, maybe this is the only reason uh, that can, yeah, a little bit a handicap because you always have to think about your kids. But if you have no kids, you can do whatever you want. You are just responsible for your own life. And this is very important to understand. Yeah. I, I fully agree with you. And this is true. I mean, Marco and I, we have kids and this has uh, <laughs> had an impact of our life. I would say still has. Uh, yeah. on, on the other hand, uh, I think what I learned personally over the last few years, uh, you know, things happen in your life. You maybe uh, you, you can lose your job. You know, when I had to close the, the company uh, and, and kick out 67 people on the street, I took also a decision. I say, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something that I like to do. I always did something that I like to do, but the end was very bad with that company. I mean, we, you do not like to put 67 people on the street because you are friends also uh, with some of the, these, we, we, we had a friendship over uh, an employment uh, term, I would say. But I took also the decision, it was late in my life to say, fuck it, I don't want to live the life of others. Everybody exactly. tries to dictate your life, your parents, the school, the system, and, and at the end, you are not happy. And, and, and even if you are in a surrounding like we are, you know, I decided to go to the Maldives and then do my life in the diving industry. And nevertheless, there was a moment you come back into the system by the back door and you are put into the system again, even in a passionate environment. I was working all my life in this diving environment, but then it was a, a, a certain moment that you belong to a company and this company is putting you pressure, 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 figures, 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 and you do not see the water anymore. You lose your passion. You lose everything. But you are self-responsible. You have to exactly. take the for your life to, to really go out of this system and say, no, I don't want to do this. I, you know, if you have to go to, um, I, I had this discussion just a few minutes before, but Let's say you are invited by your family to have, you have to go there to have a, I don't know, a tea, a coffee or whatever, and you don't want to go there. It's, it's your decision to go or not to go. But if, if you don't want to go, don't go. That's it. It, it starts there. It really starts with very little things like that. Do what you like. Exactly. Yeah. And well, don't I, listen to the naysayers. <laughs> yeah. But I have as well, like John claude I have kids as well. And sometimes maybe they kept me from from doing stuff that I would have liked to do. But then again, uh, they also gave me a kick to show them that no, you have to go and follow your dreams. And well, I moved to a lot of continents with my kids. Um so so yeah, they can be they will definitely and I will not lie about that. How do you say it? They will keep you from doing some things and you might not live that perfect life that you would see if you don't have kids. <clears throat> but then they add other things and they That's, should, you know, they should not, true. they should not keep you from, from living what you want to live. Because actually I, I always tell them, that's one thing I always tell them. Nah, I don't want to go back to Switzerland to an office. Uh, look where we live. Look, uh, you want to see me happy or you want to see me sad? It's a very simple question. And they say, no, no, if you're happy, we're happy. So there it's can be also a point. driving force. And there was a the point. point. You are a role model for them, you know, and that's Philip important. Said, Philip said, kids are to follow you as a father. I raised uh, three sons in Australia, in Egypt, and in Germany. <laughs> Because they will copy you eventually, and, and uh, great to see. So, and uh, he says um, uh, they have made it fine. One is CEO in, uh, I think, in Australia. One is senator in Berlin. The other is chef de cuisine. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> I think Marco, you made also a good point. If you can show your kids that you can live your dream, and you make them participating in your dreams, and you leave them live their lives. I think this has a, a great, uh, a great impact too. It's not working fully all the time. For me, yeah, it's working only fifty percent. But <laughs> no, I think 
uh, I think you have um, you are great role models for the kids because you live your dreams and your kids will follow you whatever their dreams is. Um, I think the problem is that most of the parents um, are not living like you guys, like a role model in the right way. They live it in the wrong way because they have the normal boring lives and, and they are in the system. And uh, so the chance that these kids go out of the system is um, maybe not so big like in, in your uh, families that they will do it definitely for sure Possible, I think, yeah. uh, it's definitely because I think it's very important when you are young that you know what you want for the rest of your life I mean you yeah. said John Claude you changed uh, just a few years ago now you have still a few years <laughs> left to have the perfect life uh, but <laughs> but I think yeah um earlier you start the bad ideas, you know. And and the yeah. funny thing is the funny thing is that when I was uh, making the decision to become a professional freediver, um I talked to other guys uh, in Austria which are also in the extreme sport industry, like Felix Baumgartner, which is a great friend and mentor of mine. And he was the only person at that time who said, do it. Jump in the cold water. You can do it definitely with your records on the ice, and try it out. What 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 can be wrong? And if something is wrong, you still can go back to the bank. So just try it out. Give it a chance. And and uh, I did it. And uh, I think it's important to have also some uh, mentors in your life, which you guys are for your kids. Um, I had the luck to have uh, Felix as a friend and mentor. And every time I have a question, I call him and say, okay, also with the three years, no money. I said, Felix, poof, I have no money. And he, no, don't stop, don't stop. Push yourself, try it, and you will see the success will follow. Um, so it's uh, always also important to have someone who is uh, uh, pushing you. Um, so um, your kids are really lucky to have you guys as a father. <laughs> no, well, so, okay. Oh, much christian uh philip says uh, last sentence you would be the perfect model for your child give them the <laughs> that they will follow <laughs> uh, that's the reason why i make my speeches uh, because i really want to inspire so many people on this planet to make the perfect life for them which means not they should start diving or whatever but i really want to inspire other people um, to follow my uh yeah my ideas my 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 think ways and whatever it it proves that uh free diving diving can lead to so many different aspects in life huh? with yeah. uh, mental with uh, decisions with leaving the comfort zone with uh, whatever you said uh, living the perfect life uh, finding solutions and not uh, focusing on problems um get out of the system uh, be a dreamer i mean i i took so many notes and i i think really it was absolutely inspiring to have you tonight here and that you took the time to join us i think uh, uh it was different than uh, the other times and i think we could uh, probably talk forever and maybe <laughs> with for sure, for sure. <laughs> talking maybe uh more about what you how you can use your 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 breathing technique so maybe we can do that because i the breathing technique can also bring you this um uh i would say mental stability or uh, strength to to go over problems and and really find these solutions so uh christian thank you very much for uh, uh joining us tonight uh, marco as usual uh, good uh, partnership to uh, to have these uh, interviews, uh, yeah, this will be interesting. System, uh, so uh, people will see the the replay. When you see the replay, uh, just uh, if you have questions, ask questions. Uh, come back. We will definitely make sure that we uh, have an opportunity to ask Christian. Uh, uh, we always have a contact with him anyway. And yes, thank you very much. And if you want, and if also the other guys want, uh, we can definitely start another talk sessions in two, three weeks or one month or whatever, and uh, can 
yeah, as you say, we can talk forever. <laughs> I think there are so well, many different topics, okay. and and uh, for yeah. me, as you see now, it, it's it's really my passion uh, to talk and uh, to be a role model. So I would love to talk again in the next. All right, I weeks. think we could do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, all the ones who watch the live. Uh, we'll watch the replay. Thank you, Philip, for doing so many good comments. And we'll see each other probably soon. And uh, to everyone, I wish you a very nice uh, evening. And we stay uh, in touch very soon, too. All right. Good night, everybody. Ciao. Okay. Bye-bye.